One of the things I get asked to lecture on or be a panelist for is synchronization to film and TV. The positive effect on an artist's career is without question. Radio's influence has somewhat waned. Computer games and film placements are in. Take Sears Breathe Me in hit US TV series Six Feet Under. Huge impact for the artist and what a voice. I really wanted to know who sung that. In fact, I think I went and bought her album on the strength of it. Take the Sopranos theme tune. It certainly made a dent for Alabama 3. And the hook from their track, Woke up this morning, got yourself a gun, ingrained itself in everyone's memories. From personal experience, and on a much smaller level, after a few sinks to series like Weeds, Courtney Cox's Dirt, I got my band Carver Carver in an episode of a series that started right after The Sopranos finale. That was a David Milch series, as in Deadwood, and was called John from Cincinnati. And what was key to that process was that I controlled both sides of the equation, master and sync rights. Earlier Carver Carver material had been signed to third party record labels, but this was released on my own label, Chocolate Fireguard, and that was crucial. By this point, I was also working with an agent, but it's clear, as decent as I believed the band's music to be, it was attractive to music supervisors as much because I was able to clear the rights within 24 hours. This would not have been the case with multiple rights holders, i.e. third party record labels and publishers who often angle for larger cuts. Because in synchronization, we often talk about such terms as in perpetuity, which means literally forever. Uh, I got the band to sign the paperwork too. So we were all on the same sheet. The fee earned helped cushion the financial burden of US touring costs and earned the songwriters income from airplay. There was a spike in the digital sales of the tune in question, which certainly helped. It pains me to say this as a singer, but I normally highly recommend bouncing down instrumental versions and making sure they are as close as you can get to the vocal versions. Instrumentals are much easier to sync because they don't interfere with the narrative of the TV show or the film. And a good music supervisor might wish to cut from the instrumentals to the vocal versions back to the instrumentals wherever appropriate. What was remarkable for me about John from Cincinnati was that it was a full vocal version in a key scene. Due to the writer's strike, the series only lasted a dozen or so episodes, but I still pinch myself about that soundtrack. Listen, 24 tracks, all huge artists like U2, Muse, BB King, John Coltrane, TV on the radio, David Byrne, Kasabian, Elvis Costello, just went on and on and on, even Bob Dylan. And then there was this obscure electronica act from Huddersfield in the UK that no one had heard of. And it certainly provided Carver Carver with much needed hype, that's for sure. I'm gonna be discussing more about synchronization and publishing during the next few weeks of the Get Your Act Together online course for Cloth Cat. Catch you later and check back for some more industry tips. Peace.